This is Dante Williams. Are you watching? Dante's. 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 Boxing Nation. This is Showtime Sean Paul. Filipino Flash, Jesse Burns. This is Al Bernstein. You're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Hi, I'm Sugar Ray. You're Chick Shane. Search over the last name, Mark. Dante's. 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 Boxing Nation. Boom, 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 boom. Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from Wilder. My name is Gennady Golovkin. And you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? You know, this is almost unprecedented when you think about it. Ever since Golovkin fought Kell Brook, there have been a number of professional boxers and trainers that have been criticizing Gennady Golovkin's performance. Despite Gennady Golovkin getting a fifth round TKO, over Kell Brook. So the latest person to say something about Gennady Golovkin's performance is Errol Spence trainer, James. Now James, who's a former fighter as well, he had some very interesting things to say about Gennady Golovkin and Errol Spence versus Gennady Golovkin, which surprised me when I read the article. Let me go ahead and quote what James had to say to Ring TV. Quote, I said he would be too fast. He exposed Triple G. Arrow would knock them both out. He spars with heavyweights and cruiserweights every day. I do have to talk to Spence about it, and I believe he will beat Golovkin with skill, power, and speed. But it's up to him to actually take the fight. End quote. Now let me tell you something guys, when I first read this article, just reading the headline, I was assuming that Errol Spence trainer, he was saying, you know, if hypothetically Errol Spence were to fight Gennady Golovkin, he would knock him out. I didn't know that James, Errol Spence's trainer, he was actually considering taking the fight. That is big news. That is really, really big news and it would be a big step. Now, I wanna ask everyone this question, and I want you to be very, very honest with yourself. It doesn't matter what you type, it doesn't matter what you tell your friends. I want you to be honest in your heart when I ask you this question. If Errol Spence and Gennady Golovkin were the exact same size in the same weight class, who would you pick to win that fight? Who would you see as the favorite going into that fight? I think if we're all being honest, at least all of us, the vast, vast majority of us would say that Errol Spence wins that fight hands down. Now, and of course, when you're jumping up two weight classes, that's a lot different. Now, and I'm not saying Errol Spence couldn't move up two weight classes and beat Gennady Golovkin because that would be more of a 50-50 fight than Brook versus uh, Gennady Golovkin. But let me ask you another question because I know a lot of you guys never thought about this. Let me ask you this. How often do you hear a featherweight or a featherweight trainer saying, I'll knock out that welterweight champion? Right? How often do you hear that? How often do you hear a featherweight talking about beating Errol Spence, beating Keith Thurman, or his trainer? Have you ever heard Roman Gonzalez say he would knock out Guillermo Rigondi out? Have you ever heard Roman Gonzalez's trainer saying he would beat or knock out Guillermo Rigondi out? How many welterweights or middleweights have we heard say, I would beat Andre Ward. How many lightweights and featherweights and their trainers, how many of them are talking about knocking out Terrence Crawford? Even beating Terrence Crawford? The answer is an astounding zero, right? So those series of questions that I just presented to you guys, 
that should tell you something right there. That should tell you everything you need to know right there. Let me ask you another question. If Guillermo Rigondeaux were to move up two weight classes, let's say he moved up from 112 to 118 because he wanted to challenge the much bigger Roman Gonzalez, who would you guys favor to win that fight? you would most likely favor Guillermo Rigo to win that fight, right? He's moving up from 112 to 118, which is what, six pounds? You would favor Guillermo Rigo to win that fight. But if I asked you if Roman Gonzalez were to move up from 112 to 118, or if he were to move up from 115 to 118, and Guillermo Rigo were to come down from 122 to 118. Who would you pick to win that fight? You would still pick Guillermo Rigondeaux to win that fight, right? That tells you everything you need to know. I don't even have to break it down and explain where I'm going with this because the answers to the questions tell it all, right? So um, once again, I'm going back to Errol Spence's trainer saying this, um, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. I did not know that Errol Spence was training with heavyweights, training with cruiserweights. I mean, that's impressive. That's really impressive because Abel Sanchez, Gennady Golovkin's trainer, he told me all the time, or he would tell me all the time, he says, Golovkin, he spars with cruiserweights. And he knocks down some of the cruiserweights. He hurt some of the cruiserweights, right? So you have Errol Spence sparring with heavyweights and sparring with cruiserweights as well. That says a lot. That says a lot. You know, if this was a perfect world, Gennady Golovkin and Roman Gonzalez, they would be fighting in the welterweight division. And the reason why I bring up those names in particular, because once again, these are the fighters that the media is pushing right now. Once again, ESPN has already rated Roman Gonzalez and Gennady Golovkin as top 25, the greatest fighters in the last 25 years. That is what ESPN did. Now, take that with a big chunk of salt because when you look up ESPN on the Wikipedia, even Wikipedia calls ESPN bias. You think I'm playing around? Go ahead and look it up. Go ahead and Google ESPN and go to Wikipedia and read what they say about ESPN. And if that's not enough to prove how biased ESPN is, remember the year that Floyd Mayweather fought the fighter that even ESPN kept saying Floyd Mayweather needed to beat and needed to fight, when Floyd Mayweather beat the quote-unquote fighter of the decade, Manny Pacquiao, ESPN, they gave the fighter of the year award to who? To Ronda Rousey. And only months after they gave her that award, she ended up getting knocked out in the same year they gave her that award. So we know what time it is when it comes to ESPN. But going back to Gennady Golovkin, you know, this is the reason why Golovkin is definitely being criticized by so many professional boxers and trainers of all races and nationalities, all positions, all roles that they play. This is the reason why so many people are criticizing Gennady Golovkin. When you're supposed to be the most feared fighter in boxing, welterweights are not supposed to be calling you out. They're not. Even if it's just for money, they're not supposed to be calling you out. Andre War comes to mind when I'm just thinking of all this stuff I'm talking about right now. This is a guy who called out Gennady Golovkin when he was at 168 pounds. Golovkin was already talking about fighting fighters that were actually bigger than Andre Ward, like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. with no catch weight, and fighters like Carl Froch. 
So War calls him out. Let's make this fight happen. Gennady Golovkin, he turns the fight down. He doesn't fight him. Fans, they start to say, hey, uh, Andre Ward, why don't you leave Golovkin alone? And why don't you go up and wait? And why don't you fight Sergey Kovalev? You won't do that, will you, Ward? Because you're afraid to, huh? Andre Ward surprises all of the fans, all of the decafs, and he does exactly what the fans and HBO ask Andre Ward to do, right? Now, going into the Kovalev fight, Andre Ward is the favorite to beat the bigger, tougher boogeyman, Sergey Kovalev. So I ask you guys another question. We've already established that Ward is moving up in weight. He's at a disadvantage. He's facing pound for pound, top five, top three, one of the best fighters in the world. Some people even have Sergey Kovalev as number one pound for pound today. That's who Andre Ward is going up against. And Andre Ward is the favorite to beat Sergey Kovalev. So I want you to be honest with yourself. If Golovkin were to move up from 160 to 168 to fight the bigger Andre Ward, who will win that fight? We all know hands down. We all know hands down Andre Ward wins that fight. So this should just be food for thought for you guys. Once again, love without truth is hypocrisy and truth without love is brutality the truth hurts the truth hurts there is no way you can explain this many professional boxers and trainers criticizing one fighter and that's Gennady Golovkin remember these professional boxers trainers they're not criticizing, or they never criticized Floyd Mayweather this way. They're not criticizing Lomachenko. They're not criticizing Sergey Kovalev this way. They're not criticizing Andre Ward, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Keith Thurman. They are only criticizing Gennady Golovkin this way. So when it comes to you decafs, have you ever wondered why it is none of the professional boxers, at least not too many of them, are agreeing or agreeing with anything that you say? And 95% of them are agreeing with everything you hear me say. You know why that is? Because professional boxers and trainers, they are looking at things from a boxer's perspective. Decafs are looking at things from an emotionally attached fan's perspective. They're not basing things on what logically makes sense. They're basing things off of who they like and who they don't like. This is the reason why the only people you're really going to hear agreeing with decafs are other decafs on the internet, right? If I were to bring in if I were to bring some of these decafs into these boxing gyms that I go to all the time and I were to let them talk to these professional boxers the way they talk online, they would get laughed out of the gym. And that is a fact. Because it ain't no pom-poms in the boxing gyms. And that's all we have on the internet. So let's see what um, Errol Spence has to say about possibly fighting against Gennady Golovkin. I truly believe Errol Spence, he should work on getting one of these big welterweights in the ring first. If he were to beat one of those guys and then think about moving up and facing um, Gennady Golovkin, then, you know, it'll be a little bit different. But we'll see. We'll see um, what Errol Spence has to say regards to what his trainer James said. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.
this is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation.